Kindergartners, it's Miss Ronigan, and I am so excited, like always, for another great day of math. We're gonna keep growing our brain, learning new things, and of course, having so much fun. Here we go. So today, I'm showing you this picture. This is my dog, Baby Girl, and I have so much fun baby girl, with Baby Girl. This last weekend, Baby Girl and I went to the dog park. She was climbing on logs and trees. We were running around in the woods, and she was just having so much fun. So Baby Girl and I went to the dog park, but... You'll never believe it. When we got there, we saw so many dogs. We saw Mrs. House Laudenstock there, Wrigley. We saw Mr. Bolenstock there. And we saw all these other bonus special dogs there. Wow, how cool. All these dogs had so much fun playing and running, and it really was such a blast. So now that I showed you all of these super cute pictures of our dogs, I need your help because we are going to make this into our math story problem. So I started out with one dog. It was just baby girl when we went to the dog park. Then we met all these other dogs there when we go. Let's count how many dogs we met at the dog park. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, we met five dogs at the dog park. Now I want to figure out how many dogs did I get to see running around and having so much fun together. I started off with just baby girl, so that's one. Then we saw five dogs there. So I'm going to add them together. Remember when we add, we make this sign. It makes a straight line down and a straight line across. That means we're taking those two groups and we're putting them together to make a bigger number. When we add these groups together, we always have this other special sign. I bet you know what it's called. It's the equal sign. So the equal sign tells us the number after shows how many we have left or how many more we have now. So since we're adding them together, we're gonna have more dogs than what we started with and it's going to be a bigger number. I want you to think in your brain, show me on your fingers, how many dogs were there in total at the dog park? Started with one, just baby girl. We saw five of them there. Show me on your fingers, what is our new number? Ooh, I hope you're showing me the number six, because then you would be right. There were six total dogs at the dog park. Now let's read our equation together. One plus five equals six. Awesome job. See how fun it is to do our math story problems? Now, I want you to close your eyes. That's right, keep them closed. Shut nice and tight, no peeking. Close your eyes and visualize. So picture in your brain the park at Shirley Hills. Remember there's a big park, it's pretty colorful, right outside Shirley Hills. If you were a friend who went to school in person, we would have played at this park for recess. All right, do you have that park in your brain? Are you picturing it? Ready, set, open your eyes. Here's our park. So I see this park right in front of me. And I want you to think about what is something that you might see at the park. Hmm. First, think of something you might see at the park. Then I want you to try to create a story problem about what you are thinking. Hmm. Try to think about your own story problem of things you might see at the park. Well, are you ready for my story problem? I'm pretty excited about it and I definitely need your help. So when I was at the park, I was outside for a recess with you and I looked up in the sky and I saw three birds. Those are blue birds because they are blue. So I saw three birds. So I'm going to write down the number three. I saw three birds in the sky, but then I looked on the ground and I saw two birds on the ground. So I'm gonna write down the number two. I wanna figure out how many birds were there total. So if I wanna figure out how many birds in all, how many total birds there are, I know it's going to be a bigger number and I'm going to add those birds together Remember what's the sign we need again is the equal sign. All right, show me that fast math on your fingers. How many total birds do we see at the park? 
Ooh, I hope you're showing me a whole hand. Ready, take your hand and give me a high five, ready? High five, awesome. You should have one full hand of five beautiful fingers. Perfect, so I'm gonna write the number five because we do see five birds. We see three in the sky and two on the ground. But did you know that I could make this story problem into a subtraction problem as well? Let's give it a try. So if I see all of these birds, how many total birds are there again? Oh, right, five. So if I see five total birds and three birds flew away, I would subtract them so that we are taking away or subtracting three birds. And I wanna figure out how many birds are there left at the Shirley Hills playground. So I need that equal sign again because I'm figuring out how many total are left. So do this fast math, either on your fingers or in your brain or by counting the birds. Show me on your fingers how many birds are left. Ooh, I hope you're holding up the number two. And then you would be right. There are two birds left. They are the two little cutie birds right on the floor. So do you see how we can take some birds and we could make it into an addition problem to make a bigger number or a subtraction problem to make a smaller number. We're going to do one more addition or subtraction problem from this picture. So I'm just gonna take my eraser and do a quick erase so I can have this space to do more great work. So on the playground, I see some slides. Mm, take a look, see if you can find the slides. Can you find them, can you find them? They're kind of tricky to see, but if you've been there, you know. On this playground, I see some green slides. Let's count all the green slides we see together. One, two, three. So we see three green slides at the playground. I also see another cool, colorful slide. It is purple and yellow and I think a little green right on the top. So there is one more slide that I see. How many total slides do we see in this picture at the Shirley Hills Playground? Hmm. I bet you could touch and count them. You could put them on your fingers and add on. But all in all, we are going to be adding to make our bigger number because we want to add those two groups of slides together. We need that equal sign. Can't forget that equal sign. So how many total slides do we have on the playground? Whisper it out loud to me. Four. We have four slides that we see on this playground. Awesome. But if I were to see three slides on this side. So right over here, we see three slides over here. And of those three slides, how many are green? Let's count the green ones. One, two. So on this part where you have to climb up the rock wall and you can go down vroom, 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 that side or you climb up the rock wall and go woo down that side or you go start over here and I believe it's right here and you can climb all the way up. You, oh, or you could start way over there and go across the bridge. So of this part over here, we see how many that are green? Two. So if I see two green slides, I wanna figure out how many of those slides are not green. So if I start with three, and I know that two of them are green, how many are not green? I would want to use the subtraction sign because I am taking away those green slides from those three that I see on that side and I'm going to equal how many left. There's only one left and that one left is the one right here. So I equal it to be one. So they are used some addition problems and subtraction problems, but I told a story with that. So addition and subtraction problems aren't only used with just some numbers. Numbers are pretty awesome too, but you also can use it when you're telling stories. So I want you to think of some stories that you could tell that are addition story problems or subtraction story problems. And maybe tonight at dinner, you could tell the adults or your brothers or sisters at home. You could tell it to your dogs or cats or fish or hamsters or any animals that you have. Try to, some, to think of some cool addition or subtraction story problems. Wonderful work today, friends. To get started on our math workbook page, the first thing that you need in front of you is your pencil and your math workbook. Now, I want you to open up your math workbook to find this page 
It is unit three, lesson seven, or page 161. Make sure you found this page. We're going in order, so it should be the next page in your workbook. This page might look familiar because it is. We have been practicing this strategy and these different techniques, and it is always so great to keep practicing. Just like every day we do our math whole group routines, which I hope you're still doing with us every single day, because it's the more you practice, the better you'll get. So keep on practicing. That's why we're continuing to practice. But before I can begin, on the top of my paper, I need to write my name. So I need to write Miss... Ron again. I'm going to write Miss R because my last name is pretty long. And I want you to get started right away. So first it says draw the circles on the number parade. Woohoo! We've already done this number parade. It says use a five group. And how many are in a five group? Oh, it's right in the name. It's only five. So at the top we're going to draw five circles. Count with me. One, two, three, four, five. Now I have to keep going because is this the number five right here you see? No, it's the number six. So if I have five in my head, let's keep counting. Five, six. Oh, I can stop because that's the number. So now let's do that five group again. Remember we only need five on the top. One, two, three, four, five. Let's keep counting down below. Six, seven, oh, that's it. Do you see this pattern so far? We have five and five, and I bet you'll have five groups this whole way on the top. But down below, first we start with one, then it goes two. <gasps> mm, that keeps counting on. I wonder if this next one's going to add on. What number comes after two? Three. Let's see. Let's do this one together. See if there's three down here. So we have to do the five group first. One, two, three, four, Five. Now you keep counting. Six, seven, eight. Oh, we were right. There are. There is a pattern down below too. One, two, three. This pattern isn't repeating, but it is a pattern that we see and recognize and know that it is counting on. Awesome. All right, you have to do these last two on your own. I know you can do it. Then down below number two, it says use the five group. Oh, we love these five groups, and they are so helpful for us when we do math. Awesome. And it says draw to show the number. Ooh, but guess what? We've done this before. We have the five group up on the top, so we can already put that number right in our brain. We don't even have to count it because we know that there are five straight across because it's all taken up and they look the same. So here we have five, and we just have to add on five, six, five, six. Seven. So you have to do your best. Do all of those circles so it equals this number. So this side, six, should be the same on this side. This side, ten, should be the same as this side, ten. Make sure they look the same on both sides. Then, now over here, it says write the number. So your job is to count the circles and write the number in the square. Try to do it as fast as you can by keeping your eyes peeled for that five group because that five group will help us count starting at five and then adding on to count up. When you're all done with this side, flip it over. On the back, we get to write another teen number. What is this teen number? It's 15. Our 15 is a 10 and a five. So you get to practice writing those fifth, that 15 number. Remember, we always start at the top. We make our neck, big belly, and our hat. Oh, make sure it touches. There we go. Try your best. Do all rows. Start at the top row, the next row. Oh, then we get to move to this number. What's this number? That's 16. Great job. The number 16 is a 10 and a 6. And that equals the number 16. So we're just going to practice writing those two numbers, the 1 and the 6, to represent the number 16. Make sure that your numbers are going the right way. They look just like these ones right over here. And none of them are backwards. I know you can do it. 
at the bottom, we get to practice our adding again, which is so awesome. You're going to be a pro at adding. Remember, when we add, we make a bigger number. You can draw circles to represent these numbers. You can show them on your fingers, but make sure that you are writing that bigger number right in the boxes. I'm going to let you do it all by yourself today. I know you can do it. Take a look around at the numbers on this page to make sure that your numbers aren't backwards. Then, down below, right down here, the last thing we have to do for our math page is subtract the numbers. So we are using that subtraction sign. Make sure your eyes are peeled for what sign you use. Whenever we use a subtraction sign, it makes a smaller number. So all the numbers in the box should be smaller. None of them should be bigger than any of the other numbers that you see. Make your equations solve the problem to find your answer you can draw circles you could draw squares you could draw triangles and you could cross them off or use your fingers and put your fingers down to represent how many numbers you are using in your subtraction problem when you're all done double check your work to make sure no numbers are backwards and then it's your very best work with all of the entire thing done then you can go on in math. So, so far you have finished your whole entire day. I hope you've been doing your very best work just like I always love to see you do. Now that this video is coming to an end, you can take out that handy dandy checklist and check off the mark for your math on Smart Suite. Then finish that math workbook page and make sure you put an X when you are all done with the whole thing. After that, you get to do your seesaw activity. Take a look. Remember to click the play button if you have questions on how to do it. But otherwise, I want you to look for those signs and I know you can figure out what to do. When you're done with math and your seesaw activity, don't forget to have a lunch and go to a specialist to finish all of your work. All right, keep up the great work. Keep working hard and keep having fun. I love you and I miss you.